Hello there, and welcome. Yes, yeah, so we're going to start the Bomberman clone today. Um, this is just the basic setup stuff, so we're going to run through it fairly quickly. It's actually taken um, from an Unreal Engine wiki thing. So we're going to start with the third person C++ thingy. I've created an Unreal Engine project with the third person example. I've called it Bomberman. So start from there. If you create that setup, um, stop this video and then come back again once you've done that. So what you'll find is that you've got the usual classes that it creates by default. Um, go to that. You see the sort of usual setup stuff. Um, so there's a website. If I just go to that one, uh, it's on the wiki, and it's got local multiplayer tips. So we're basically going to go through and add some of the things that it's got in here to our project as a simple part. Um, one thing we're not going to do is do this bit because it's actually changed. The code's changed a little bit in the Unreal Engine. Uh, so we're going to go through these steps uh, in this first video just to get us up to the point where it's got um, multiplayer keyboard kind of stuff. So you can read along with that and do it from there, or you can uh, watch this video. So anyway, where should we start? So let's just show you box standard template. So the first thing we want to do is we want to set up a simple camera uh there is it basic camera actor empty actor there is a whatever be in here somewhere uh yeah we want a camera actor basically we're trying to get something set up in a sort of bomberman style view so see where we can get it Something like that ish. Now we can delete all of these boxes and stuff later on. Actually, no, let's delete them now. You're gone, you're gone, you're gone, you're gone, you're gone, you're gone. Uh, build the lighting. Yes. Three. Right. So now we've got an arena. Oh, another thing we would probably want to do is we want to add in some spawn points. So place starts. Drag a few of those into here. This is the easy sort of setup stuff. Obviously, we'll reorganize all of this stuff later on. That should do for now. We're only going to have four players max anyway, so. That's fine. Now, um, so yeah, getting back to the camera thing. So where's my camera? Camera actor there. What we want to do is we want to set this guy as the default for um, player zero. So we want to set auto activate for player zero on this camera. What that should do is when you run it, It'll make it so that whoever spawns first sets up a camera. Uh, yeah, so that's good. That's got our first bit sorted out. So we can just leave that camera where it is. I mean, obviously, we'll do some code for that to actually keep the arena in view, or we'll mess with it later on. So, what next thing we want to do is we want to be able to spawn. Um, a bunch of characters, and if you go back to that document, it's got. Eh, we've talked about doing the shared camera. Um, does it talk about creating multiple camera characters? It does somewhere? I'm sure it does. Yeah. Okay. So talking about this using you gameplay statics create player to create the players. Um, so that's the next bit we're going to do. We're going to spawn in the game mode. We're going to spawn a bunch of extra characters. So in our game mode, go to the header file. 
what we're going to do is we're going to create a method in here called begin play um, that's going to start our game mode and then we can just create the definition so in the cpp file we want to do what that bit of text was telling us to do I go here it says use game play you game play statics create player do that you uh, game play statics create player and wait for a second for the IntelliSense to catch up because it's being dumb. Oop, did I spell play wrong? Look at my head. There we go, yeah. So, gameplay statics is, it needs a world context, so we can use get world because we're inside the game mode. Control ID minus one means use the um next available id value and then true means actually spawn the player so we want that and because we're going to do a four player game let's just for now to test things out do this which is um it should in theory let's just save the header file and it's saving there we go um what that should do is should create four players. So in order to enable that, what we want to do is we want to compile. And then we want to set that game mode as our game mode in the game. So when we start, what you'll notice is that it's created the four players. Um, well, obviously it's split screening. So in order to fix the split screening, it's actually pretty simple. So we can go to our settings. I think it's project settings. Um, I don't remember where it is. Uh, untick the new split screen. What that'll do is it'll fix it so that every single player who spawns in the game uses the same camera, which is player zero's camera, which is that one that we up in the world. Okay, so we've got four players spawning. Now we need to give some input to them. And that's where that document came in. So um, what it's saying here is that we create a game viewport client class and we override these input key and input axis functions. We do our own implementation of them. Um, what I would suggest we do is we do this version of the um, keyboard so that we can do essentially four players on a keyboard. It does mean that we have to end up setting up a whole bunch of um, mappings Actually, no, should we, should we do this one? We should probably do this one as well. Um, it means that you'll, you can do multiple players per keyboard by just overriding these functions. So input key and input axis. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll write both of these things. So we need to create a game viewport client class. Okay, so we need to add a new C++ class. It's game viewport client. Weird that. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, make sure that it's got this game viewport client selected. Make it public. I'm going to call it Bomberman Game Viewport. Uh, Bomberman viewport client even. Um, and that should create our class for us. We've made it public. Uh, and give it a second to compile. Yeah, 
let's not worry about that. Compiler could not be restarted. Well, that's fair enough. Um, so now we've got this Bombman Viewport Client and it's derived from Game Viewport Client, which is what we want. Um, so if we go back to that document, basically going to require us to do this input key thing. Um, so we're just going to do the input keys for now. We'll worry about the um, joysticks and stuff later on. So we want this function. Um, so I'm going to cut and paste that because we're kind of lazy. And we're going to shove that in there. So we want to do a quick action, take that definition inside there. Okay, so what do we want to actually put in here? Well, um, if you look at the text in that document, we can pretty much just literally copy it. Um, it's this one down here that we want. So, because I've already come paste that, I'm just going to shove this in here. Uh, it's a pretty th easy thing to understand. So if we get an input key and it's not a game pay game pad or mouse button, we're going to get the engine, get a number of players and essentially map um send the key to every single collect connected player essentially so we're going to propagate one key press across all players and then we're going to in the player select whether it's us or not based on the id value of who's supposedly handling it so essentially this thing takes any input and sends it to everybody um which is Probably not the best thing in the world, but whatever. Um, one thing we will probably want to do um, we've got that here, so that should do it. Let's uh, save that and see if it compiles. Uh, so, see if we can hot reload that just out of interest. Pile fails. Engine game people fine, which looks about right. Uh, yep. Okay. I don't think the function's wrong. Something to do with the implementation. Go back to what it was saying in our message log. Right, we're back, and uh, I went through and read read the documentation again on this website and it actually mentions here change your project's header file to include engine.h instead of engine minimal.h because that's what was causing the problem so let's get this guy and let's do that and build it remember to read the documents guys you notice I'm using incredible here on my license, I explain. Are you working? Incredibles a thing used in the industry to build quite large projects. You can use multiple cores and multiple machines and stuff. It's good fun watching the uh, little Incredible build thing 
work. Okay, we're back. Right, so... Um, 